Hey, it's Rob here from Bay Marine Electronics. For this Tuesday's Tech Tip, we're looking at the very basics of sounder operation, and then we're going to compare the different types of sounder, so narrow beam, wide beam, down view, and side view. So the way that the fish finder works is that it makes a sound and then it listens for the returned echo. So what happens is the head unit sends an electrical impulse down to the transducer, which in our case is at the back of the boat, and this makes a noise much like a speaker does in your home stereo system, and then it also listens for the return echo. So the transducer is doing both the speaker's job and also the microphone's job, listening for the return echo. So what we can see on screen is basically just returned echoes. So at the moment there's quite a strong returned echo um, right at 18 metres and that's the bottom. So that's obviously going to be, not normally it would be the strongest uh, return echo. We can also see here um, some also return echoes from about in the middle of the screen at about 6 metres. And this is what uh, we would expect fish line to look like. So that's probably uh, a couple of little smaller fish, couldn't really tell you exactly what it is. Um, and then you've also got to see the, the, the very big kind of red mass up here between 0 and 4 metres, that's turbulence. So we're currently sitting in the middle of the Tauranga Harbour entrance, um, and so there's a lot of upswellings, lots of turbulent flow, and so they will also reflect um, the sound energy in a similar way to what the bottom end fish does. Um, so there, down at that 17 metre mark, that's probably something a little bit more interesting. Um, but again, very small fish, um, I wouldn't be kind of too excited about that. But that's what fish appear as. So the first basic control we're going to talk about is gain. So gain sets the sensitivity of the fish finder. And it's analogous to if you had an old film camera setting the exposure length. So if you set the gain too high, it just blows the picture out and you're going to get all funny echoes from uh, interference and tiny little fish that you're not really interested in. If you set the gain too low, then you're not going to see the fish that you are interested in, you're only going to see a fine um, echo of the bottom. So I'm going to go ahead now and actually set the gain too low. So I'm going to come down here and set the gain to say 52%. So there we can see uh, we're getting an echo of the bottom. Um, but not a lot else. So the fish line that actually is there is, is not shown on the sounder. And then if I go ahead and push it all the way up to 100%, you can see that we can see all of the fish line that's in the area, uh, but also some interference from the engine, a little bit of um, speckling there, um, and basically a lot of fish there that we're not really interested in. They're just too small to be of, uh, of any interest to us. Um, most people will be fine to set their gain on automatic for most of the time. Um, when you're really going to strike issues is when you are getting problems. So let's say that you have got electrical interference or you've got interference from the engine um, or you're just moving. Um, what the automatic gain settings will do is actually modify the gain um, to keep the screen clear. And if you're not aware of that then you will find that you're seeing fish sign and you might not be too sure if it's a big fish or a small fish because the automatic gain has changed um, in between. So to give you an indication of what that looks like, I'm actually just going to start moving. So we've got, still got the gain on 100%. You can see we, we've got some light speckling, but when I put us into gear and we actually start moving, you'll see there we've got quite a bit of um, orange and reddy colours have come across the screen. So in that case, set, set the gain down here about 83, 84%. And now when I stop, I know that the gain level is going to be the same as when I was moving. So that's basically gain control. Um, one quick note, just to finish on, um, if you're in deep water, you'll find the gain settings uh, much more important than if you're in shallow water. So if you're trying to push the real limits of your fish finder, um, then you'll find that any movement um, in the boat or any electrical noise will really have a bigger effect than if you're fishing in 10 meters. So the last really basic control uh, is what frequency you're using. So um, in, right now on this boat, we've actually got quite a few transducers at the back, but at the moment we're using a one kilowatt transducer, it's a TM265. Um, so I'm just gonna go ahead and change that onto a uh, dual frequency mode. So generally speaking, what you wanna use is uh, for shallow water, you want a higher frequency, and for deeper water, you want the lower frequency. So this is a dual frequency chirp transducer. It's got low and high chirp as the two frequencies. Um, 
I'm just going back to the, what a fish sign looks like. There's a uh, uh, probably a bigger fish there at uh, just at four meters uh, around a bait ball. So that's what fish around a bait ball look like. But anyway, back to what we're talking about. So we got the um, got the higher frequency now on the left hand side and the and the lower frequency on the right hand side. Um, the reason that you have the low frequency for deep water is it travels better in the water. So. If you think about um, the party down the road um, last Saturday night, um, if you're lying in bed trying to get some sleep, you hear the doof, doof, doof of the, the bass of the music, but you don't really hear the chicka, 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 chicka of the higher frequencies. Um, and that's basically because the higher frequencies can't travel as far as the low frequencies. So that's why you have low frequency for deeper water. It travels better through the water. Um, the flip side for that is that you don't get the same target resolution and clarity as you do out of the high frequency. So we're just going over a, a small school of fish at the moment, which is um, kind of perfect for, for illustrating our, our point. Um, on the left hand side you can see uh, the fish uh, quite clearly. On the right hand side the low, um, low chirp, you can see the fish are there, but you can't see um, the same kind of um, detail around that bait ball near the top, uh, nor, nor around the um, fish near the bottom as well. So. Um, so yeah, that's basically what you're missing out on with the low frequency is that, that real kind of preciseness, real detail. Um, as an aside, the medium frequency is actually quite a good combination of the two. You do get very good depth penetration, um, but you don't. Uh, but you do get also that really good um, detail as well. So one thing I didn't really mention when I had the TM265 plugged in earlier on is that for shallow water use, you're really after a wider beam width than you are for deep water use. So that transducer we had before was a narrow frequency, sorry, narrow beam width on the high frequency. Uh, and that's more suitable for deeper waters um, than that kind of, say, 50 to 200 meter range. Um, for really shallow water range, and I'm talking zero to say 40 meters, you really want a, a high frequency to get the target definition and a wide beam width to cast a decent area around the boat. So you're actually seeing what's um, you know, say within a meter or two of the boat instead of what's in a half meter circle below the transducer. And the good thing with uh, those transducers are they're quite cheap. That's, that's the cheaper transducers are the ones that are a higher frequency with a wider beam width. Okay, so we've got our um, high frequency wide beam width fish finder on at the moment. Um, and this is showing what the bottom looks like when it's got a bit of weed on it. So it's not a nice clean line. You can see there's actually some kind of bits above it. I'm just going to zoom in there so you can see. Um, so you can see uh, that there is some, some kind of um, different colours, I suppose, attached to the top of it. They'll probably um, look even more so if I turn the gain down. So, But they are actually attached to the bottom. Um, contrast that with the fish sign, which we can currently see just above the, the bottom. And you can see there's, a, there's quite a clear gap between the, that red um, sign there and the actual bottom. Um, and so that would be what the fish line looks like. So what we always kind of say is uh, what, a, what a fish look like, you know, if it's not the top, not attached to the top and not attached to the bottom, then it's going to be fish or it's going to be a plastic bag or some turbulence or a piece of seaweed or something like that. In this case, more likely fish. So what we've got up on screen at the moment is um, a comparison between um, a down scan or down view image and a regular fish finder. So the regular fish finder is on the right hand side. The main difference between the two um, is a little bit obscure, uh, but basically the down scan has got a very narrow forward aft um, beam width, uh, but it's got a very wide side to side. So we're actually looking um, 45 degrees out that way, 45 degrees out that way, but it's very narrow forward aft. So you can see that when you're moving forwards, oh, like we were, um, the fish will appear as dots because they're only in the beam for a very small amount of time. But you might actually see more of them because the, um, the, it's got a wider beam width than the regular fish finder. When the regular fish finder picks it up, it's got a circular beam. So generally speaking, the fish will remain in the beam for longer. So they give more of a, an archy, liney shape like that. Um, but you might see less of them because it's, it doesn't have the same width. The beam width is what the... Uh, the uh, beam width sideways, I should say, uh, is what the um, the down scan or down view transducer does. So let me um, 
I'll throw a, a soft bait down into that lot and see if we can identify what they are. I, I suspect it's just a little bait fish, but we'll give it a go. Oh, here we go. What have we got? Woo! Yep, so. Ah, get on there. Go. So I believe that's a kiriru, but I'm not 100% sure about that. Woo! <laughs> it's gone. <laughs> okay, so we're um, your regular fish finder and down view are a little bit limited because they're only looking directly below the boat or, you know, within about 45 degrees. Side scan, side view. Um, can be much much more powerful because it's looking out to towards the side so even if you're not running directly over something uh, it'll pop up quite nicely on on the side scan so we've got a good um, visualization of this happening right now where um, to the left hand side of the screen we can actually see um, some fish and also some foul ground um, coming up there you just see the, saw the zoom change then so we can see there's a fish there on the left hand side of, of the boat. And you can quite clearly see that, that fish sign. Uh, they're right next to the, um, the drop off of the rocks. And you can also see the rocks and stuff. So in my mind, the side scan is, is a much, much more powerful tool than the down scan imaging. Um, they're both designed to find foul ground on the bottom. Um, but with a side scan you can you can see so much more uh, just so much larger area there's another area where the side scan can be uh, quite handy we've just gone past a harbour marker and I can tell you now there's no fish around it um, because the side side view will um, you know clearly show the fish line that are around that particular harbour marker you can see the harbour marker there on the left you can see the shadow behind the harbour marker but you can't see the um, any fish sign there so I said earlier on um, that the side scan is more designed for spotting bits of foul ground than it is um, for fish um, because of the very narrow forward aft beam width. Um, and so this is basically what the foul ground will look like. We're, we're currently going out the harbour entrance um, and you can see the boulders up on the shore, uh, they extend to, to, to beneath where we are here and you can actually see the boulders on the side scan and that, that's basically what you're looking at. Um, and then of course uh, to the right hand side here we've actually got a couple of sandy areas and they appear smoother so not that same um, kind of mottled look as, as what the, um, the bouldery areas are. 